Welcome back to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest stories, trends, and innovations from leaders in global connectivity, real estate, and the networks within. I'm Buffy Harakitis of JSA, and joining me today is Francois Sturin. He is the Chief Operating Officer with Data4 Group, and he's also a contributing author of the Amazon bestseller, Greener Data. Francois, welcome. Well, thanks for uh, for having me. It's uh, really a pleasure to be with you here today at this conference. Yeah, thank you so much for being a part of our Greener Data Volume 2 book. Um, in your chapter, you co-authored with Mary Allen. Correct. Uh, yeah. Shout out to Mary Allen of mm -hmm. Insights yes. as a Service. Uh, the chapter is titled, The Open Data Center, Sustainability Proves the Case for Next Generation Build. Can you describe some of the key takeaways in your chapter and why you chose to write about this topic? Yeah, it's a very important topic. And the key uh, is uh, to prove that actually yeah, sustainability is critical and is make economic sense. You know, 10 years ago, uh, sustainability was always, hey, it's going to cost more. Right. And so what we are uh, looking at here is not just the economic sense is actually going further. The, what I said, the, we have the hard business case, sustainability, green energy, energy efficiency, renewable is actually now cheaper uh, makes a lot of uh, uh, economic sense. Uh, but in these chapters, we want to go a bit further than that. We want to describe what we call the soft business case, which means basically the next generate, the next data centers will have to be sustainable or will not be. It's our license to operate, basically. Uh, if you're not sustainable, you're not going to be able to, yeah. to build those data centers. It's a, or not, it's right? a precondition, and it's a precondition to our, our existence as an industry, clearly. And we want to describe this not only uh, like on technical ground, but more on social, how you uh, get engaged with the local community, how you give back to the local community, how you train and, and educate people to work in a data center industry, and how you interact with the local authority so they don't see those monsters coming in as, as a problem, but more as a solution, as an economic opportunity. So the, the, the chapter is really about going further than just like, business cases from a financial perspective, which I think now is proven. Uh, I think everybody understand that now sustainability is not more expensive than normal. Actually, it's an economic opportunity, but there's a social social case that needs to be built and how we engage. And I think Data4 has been quite um, leading in that, engaging with local communities, doing projects with uh, local communities uh, to make sure that they don't see data center as a threat, but as an opportunity really. Wonderful. And in your chapter, you will also touch on the Data for Good initiative program. Why don't you tell viewers a little bit more about Data for Good? Yeah. And to maybe a little uh, jump back in history, uh, like it was 2021, uh, when Data for started to say, hey, we're doing a lot of different things, but we don't really have anything organized. So let's organize everything from a sustainability perspective into a program where we define four stream about innovation, environment, communities, and, and, um, and people. Pretty standard ESG stuff. But the philosophy of that program is really to go and look everywhere where we can be sustainable from a carbon footprint perspective. So in construction, in operation, uh, everywhere like uh, where we consume uh, our fuel for our generators, our biofuel, uh, we look at low carbon concrete, all those kind of initiatives from a technical perspective. Uh, and we also look at how we uh, deal with our employees, that was the local communities, as I mentioned. And that program has actually evolved recently to include a bigger focus on two aspects, which is territories, as we say, or like local ecosystems, okay. because we think it's, uh, and this is, uh, you know, back to my, the first question, we think it's so defining for the future that we engage with the local community that it should be a big part of our program. And governance as we got more and more reporting, uh, especially in Europe, with yeah. energy efficiency. You probably discussed this with other people on this, uh, uh, here, uh, what we call taxonomy in Europe. Like uh, we, we got a, a lot more data requirement, and our industry is getting watch over a lot more. So we need to structure ourselves to be able to be um, able to comply and to do it the best way possible for the business. Yeah, to meet those regulations, correct. But also be a part of the community. Correct, like exactly. A that's amazing. And if viewers want to learn more about Data for Good, where can they go? Um, on our website, and you or you type Data for Good on uh, on any browsers, and you you get it. We actually just published our uh, recent uh, environmental report showing our progress 
including on technical ground, but also on the community side as well. So, so I mean, here at the conference, we've been hearing all about AI, AI, uh, just about every day, right, in this industry. So when we think about that in terms of sustainability, why don't you give you some of your insights there? Yeah, and I think um, AI is just uh, accelerating, like, and it's creating a, a need to be to think even more out of the box right. to find sustainable solution to our data center, especially in terms of power connection and power procurement and power supply, for instance. Uh, and clearly, I've been in this industry for 20 years. Since last year, I've never seen such an acceleration, and the uh, the amount of megawatt and everything that you hear is like is mind-boggling, right? Clearly, and how do we answer this from a power perspective? We're going to talk about this in the panel that I'm on this afternoon, for instance, in this conference as well, but is developing more solution um, in terms of power supply to the site, which is sometime on site, which is behind the meters, for instance, with renewable, uh, partnering with energy company, for instance. So I think this the scale is accelerating the, the delivery model that we're thinking about in terms of how do we get power for those data center? How do we get uh, those projects built as very large campus? Right now, I would say 100 megawatts is a new norm, right? Is that right? Uh, so. it's, it's yesterday, uh, I did an interview and it said like 450 megawatts. Correct. And I said, is, is that right? <laughs> And, and you know, right. yeah. I've been doing projects like this for some time, but they were like more outliers. Right. But then uh, now they're more like the norm, right? It's that's like, the norm. that's a norm. Everybody is doing it, right? So it's like, uh, wow. And when you look at the projection we're hearing, including in smaller market, historically like Madrid, Milan, gigawatts of requests. And so you're like, uh, wow, there's some, something happening. I think the demand is real, whether it will happen in one, two, three, four years remains to be seen depending on the market, but clearly this is accelerating. And as I mentioned back to the first question and to the, to the, to the book, if, if it's not a sustainable solution, it's not, gonna, it's not gonna work. And you could get to a point where there's two ways it could go, right? Either we get it wrong and you get data center moratorium, lots of public uh, uh, you know, backlash. Uh, backlash, I think, or you could do it in a way where you you link AI and energy transition. It's actually, I think, a, an incredible opportunity to find new energy solution that's also go along with the uh, energy transition in terms of renewable power uh, production. Um, you hear a lot more now about nuclear coming back to the picture because it's low carbon, right? right. So, yeah. um, so it's exciting because uh, it's accelerating for me the, the merge between the data center and the energy industry uh, that has been looming for like, a few yes. years, yeah. but like not to the point. It's like you can see, like uh, it's real, right? And yeah. projects are getting out of the uh, out of the out of the research uh, to to become more uh, industrialized. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Francois, it's such a pleasure to have yeah. you here today. Thank you so much for joining us and providing such great insights. And thank you so much for being a part of our Greener Data Volume Two book. If you are interested in in reading uh, Francois's chapter of Greener Data Volume 2, you can go to Amazon, greenerdata.net. And if you're here at the show, Francois is coming up on a panel you mentioned. It's at 2.10, 2.10, uh, just, uh, just after lunch. Uh, I'll try to, to get people still uh, at, at, you know, in a good attention level, right? Uh, but, but I think we, um, this is definitely one of the key topics of, uh, of this conference is around how do we, how are we gonna get, how are gonna we power, uh, we power those uh, very large sites in the future, right? So. For sure. Thanks again. For Thanks. The talk. Thanks for having me. Thank you, viewers, Thank you. for tuning in to another episode of JSA TV live from Data Cloud Global Congress 2024 in the heart of the French Riviera. Stay curious, stay connected, and happy networking.